firmitas, utilitas, venustas. There you go. Another quote. Quoted something for you last time. And that's another quote. That's from, um, oh, my goodness me, Vitruvius. And uh, it's um, a reference to um, the qualities and attributes that architecture should display. And as with architecture, so with sculpture. And as with sculpture, so with the human body. And by that, I mean to say that... Um, the human body should display those attributes of firmitas, utilitas, venustas. It means strength, utility and beauty. And um, this is what underpins my um, my what I consider to be important when I'm assessing the artistic merits of someone or something's arse. But I am aware that um, what I may consider to be the perfect arse, the perfect peach, may not, in fact, almost certainly won't be, by other people. And, um, and I wonder why that is very often geographically or possibly even the time you're on the planet um, is is an influence on your perception of what is the perfect peach and that worries me because i don't want to be thinking of a perfect peach as a perfect peach because of some external influence be it the time I'm living in, the place I'm living in, commercial pressures for me to look at an arse in a certain way and appreciate a certain type of arse. I want to know that the arse is intrinsically perfect. We know that some people like a big protruding arse. We know that some like a little, little boy's athletic type of arse. You know, um, and you only have to look back at um, you know the way the way the human form is subject to fashion in the same way as the clothes it wears. Back in the fifteen hundreds, men would go around in hose tights basically, and display long, slender, possibly skinny legs something I would consider most unmasculine today. Back in the 20s, 1920s, we all know the perfect female form is a flat-chested woman. Again, not something I would consider today to be attractive, but back in those days, de rigueur. 1950s, extraordinary shape that men were meant to be um, uh, um, emulating the Charles Atlas physique was 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 odd, wasn't it? Um, in or going further, coming further, sort of towards the modern time. Right, I think right since the nineteen nineties, you, you only have to, re you know, when I do research and I go to places like Tesco, um, I, I notice at the checkout they've got magazines for you to do an impulse buy because. Impulse buying is something which you do, don't you? Um, and they'll have magazines there, and it's men's health and fitness magazines in extraordinary, monstrous shapes that the men are, you know, and the women as well. There's fashion magazines there, and the women don't they look bizarre? Not, not, not my idea of what's um, uh, attractive at all. And you know, so like the whole of the body so too the arse itself, you know, in some societies the arse must remain covered and in the western world of course the arse is on full view. We talked about the uh, builders arse didn't we and um, they are they are naughty those builders because they tantalise you with not letting you see quite the whole of their arse but they'll let you just see down the cleavage making you want to see more and um, uh, but not letting you see more. So tantalising and so naughty, isn't it? 
Um, and the girls as well with their with their thongs or those is it those oh, I don't know those those jeans that they wear beneath you know lower down than their underwear again naughty because it's tantalizing showing you enough but not enough anyway so um well I'm searching for those what mother nature herself considers attractive something that endures you know a, a beauty that endures and will transcend time and fashion so when I produce my sculptures and they're being admired displayed and uh, practically worshipped a million years hence I want them to acknowledge that the asses on those human figures that I've carved in stone are beautiful and not out of fashion or incongruous in some way you know so um, that really 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 is important to me um, I uh, have done little part-time jobs from time to time and uh, it's really for fun but one has to keep in with the community and one has to muck in and I've taken amongst other jobs the jobs of a lifeguard and a very noble job that is because you're saving life of course on a daily basis and also looking good for the swimmers they like to see an attractive handsome lifeguard don't they and I'm happy to oblige on that one but I um, was able to observe as well as safeguarding their lives. I'm observing them, judging them actually, um, their swimming ability or not, and their physical form. And uh, each and every one of them, as they come out of the changing rooms, I'm judging them. And I noticed once there was this, well, he was a very attractive Asian young man, must have been about 17, 18 and uh, absolutely gorgeous body and I saw him I noticed that he was checking himself out in the mirror before he came into the swimming pool and uh, was very pleased with what he saw you know he gave me a little pose just a little like that like that and uh, a bit of like that like that you know and you could see he was smiling and that's because the image he was seeing matched the image that he saw in magazines and things so um uh he was happy with what he saw. But when he went into the swimming pool, he was disabled, practically. He could hardly swim at all. And um, yes, his, his body was of no use to him at all, virtually. If he was in the sea, I think he would have drowned. The fact that he could stand on the, on the floor and splash about and the knowledge that I was there, poised, ready to dive in and save him should he you know fail in the water there i would be with my universally acknowledged beautiful body which is not just beautiful but efficacious in the fact that not only can i swim but i can swim and save him who can't swim annoyingly sometimes or very often those swimmers who are practically galloping backwards and forwards along the lengths have funny little shaped bodies sometimes they're quite rotund and sometimes they are pot-bellied um, they'll always be big chested in, in one way or other sometimes big this way and sometimes big front to back you know big stern and um, that's, that's annoying because they don't look fit or efficacious and um, and yet there they, there, they, there they go I remember of course being the dutiful person I am I spent time serving with two of the world's most elite regiments and uh, um, we used to march up the hills up the mountains with half a ton on our backs each not including ammunition and food and water and um, march for days on end practicing our infiltration our projection of power into the enemy territory now, 
I make no bones about it, I have no shame in saying some of those mountains were absolutely ghastly to get up. You know, exhausting, but we did it. We had to get there at a certain time in order to keep that cap badge and that that prestigious berry that we wore. Oh, we had to do it. Some could do it easier than even I could do it. And, you know, when I was looking at them in the showers afterwards, after the exercise or the insert, insertion, you know, and, and, and operation and exfil, exfil, short for exfiltration, you'd be looking at them in the shower and thinking, how did he manage to perform so well in the mountains? when he's not got any muscle on him really, he is a little bit pot-bellied, drinks too much and smokes, you know. And this has all kind of troubled me over the time because I um, think to myself, well, what is the body that works and therefore, you know, would look good for all time on my sculpture? I read Elaine Morgan's The Descent of Woman and The Aquatic Ape. She contends that we human beings in our evolutionary pathway spent a long time as, as semi-aquatic creatures and therefore swimming is, is in our nature. But then uh, Robert Dougal, is it Robert Dougal? I can't remember now. Christopher McDougall, um, I've got my notes down there to help me, um, wrote the um, Born to Run. And his, it's his contention that, no, in our evolutionary pathway, we were born to run. And run we did. We would run like I do now, for days on end, barefooted. You know, we'd chase our prey down, all our prey much faster than us, with fangs and all sorts of things. But we as a community can run indefatigably indefatigably for days on end and our poor prey big and powerful and fast as it may be cannot endure out there on a savanna the heat and the distance and they just collapse on the ground and just say to themselves just tuck in chaps get it over with quickly you know and um, so you know it's a very 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 difficult area for me to try and indulge and, and you know you may have been thinking of this as rather a light-hearted exercise you know you standing there with no clothes on getting a bit of a thrill out of that stood there before me naked and um uh and um well stop that um but it's more than that it's a very very serious um subject this it's a very very serious endeavor that i'm trying to Produce. I've got to this stage in my career. It's important that everything I produce from now on isn't practice. It's stuff that will be marvelled at and practically worshipped. Maybe actually worshipped by people generations into the future. And I want you to keep that in mind when you're thinking about what actually is the perfect art. I, as I said, I suspect that Mother Nature is the, 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 um, the arbiter of that and it's my ardent desire to go off to Australia or to the Amazon and study the indigenous peoples there whose civilizations are, you know, the Australian Aborigines they've been around for 40,000 years as a civilization the oldest civilization of all and therefore, ugly as we may think of those poor people ugly little faces, possibly their asses, are the perfect ass, the perfect peach. I'll leave that with you now. I'm going to see what that horse wants of me out there and then I'll get back to you when we've, um, when we've done, done, done that. Bye now.